afford the double cheese and sausage? Right here, dude. If you're feeling peckish, then pull up a chair. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie food eating scenes. We've looked at all film scenes involving food, and more specifically, the eating of it. For countdowns more geared towards food preparation and food fights, be sure to check out our other videos. Number 10. Excessive Eating – Groundhog Day Stuck in a time loop with no apparent long-term consequences to his actions, the possibilities for TV meteorologist Phil Connors seem endless. I like to see a man of advance in years throwing caution to the wind. It's inspiring in a way. And when he applies that notion to his eating habits, the word feast doesn't quite do it justice. My years are not advancing as fast as you might think. More coffee, hon? Yeah, just keep it coming, please. Sure thing. From cuts of meat to cream cakes, Connors can eat it all without worrying about his waistband. Don't you worry about cholesterol, lung cancer, love handles? I don't worry about anything anymore. In this scene, his gluttony isn't impressing the girl, but it is impressing us. Proving once and for all that you can have your cake and eat it too. Well, that's exactly what makes me so special. I don't even have to floss. Number 9. Meeting the Parents, Shrek 2 The dreaded meet and eat with the in-laws is always difficult to overcome in any relationship. But when the daughter is dating an altogether different species of being, then the atmosphere can be especially tense. Shrek's royal welcome might have been tasty, but instead it was a little nasty. Uh. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Better out than in, I always say, eh, Fiona? The men prove their masculinity by facing off at the heads of the table. The women wish desperately that things were a little different, and Donkey is Donkey. That's me, the noble Steve. Hey, waiter, how about a bowl for the Steve? Oh, boy. It's dinner party pandemonium. <laughs> Number 8. Dinner at Mom's House, Goodfellas. She's shoving right around here somewhere. Just keep quiet. I don't want to wake her up. Oh, hey. yeah, look who's here. Even members of the mob have mothers, and even the mafia enjoys mealtimes. Get yourself a girl so you could settle down. That's what I, I mean. settle down almost every night, but then in the morning I'm free. I love you. I want to be with you. I want to be with you. Tommy takes a couple of his friends for dinner at his family home, treating us to a picture of domestic bliss. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I like this one. The dog, one dog goes one way and the other dog goes the other way. Well, one is going east and the other one is going west, so what? These guys can't get through five minutes without at least a little reminder of their line of work, however, and we are always aware that away from this dinner table, it's bloody business as usual. Anyway, you know what reminds me? I need this knife. I'm gonna take this, it's okay? Okay, yeah, I just need it for bring it while. back, so you know. The hubbub of conversation and the clink of cutlery aren't fooling anybody. Poor, what do you call it? The poor. The poor. The poor. The... The hoof. the hoof got caught in that grill. Oh. I got I gotta hack it off. Ooh, come on, it's a sin. You gotta leave it there, you know. Number seven, snake surprise and eyeball soup. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Some of these scenes might be giving you ideas as to what to have for dinner tonight, but this one is more likely to put you off your food altogether. Oh, sneak surprise. What's the surprise? This three-course meal is less mouth-watering and more stomach-turning. A regular snake would have been bad enough, but snake surprise is just plain puke-worthy. Give me your hat. Why? Because I'm going to puke in it. From there, we move to massive bugs, and then to a soup that truly is a sight for sore eyes. And finally, frozen monkey brains. Yum. Chilled monkey brains. Number six, the dinner table, the nutty professor. Oh, this is 
so fabulous. Ain't nothing like getting together with family and having a good meal. Oh, please take this bowl. It's too hot. Eddie Murphy takes center stage for this sit-down meal as he masquerades as the majority of diners. Uh, your nephew. Oh, baby's got a little gale. <laughs> as with Groundhog Day, we are again impressed by the excess in this scene. He's my favorite out of all of them. Jenny Jones, Marilyn Kagan, Maura Povich, Latimer, Lano, Montel. The clumps are as well-rounded as their onomatopoeic surname would have us believe. Oh, no, you ain't gotta protect me from Cleetie. Come on, Cleetie. Come on. Come on over here. Come on in here. Let's show up. Come on over. Quite clearly, this is a family that really likes their food. There are three generations enjoying three times their recommended daily intake of just about everything here. And it's hilarious. Only thing you need to study is your ass. I got a big ass. Your mama got a big ass. Please. You do have a big ass. Don't tell me nothing. Your ass is as big in our family. Number five, spaghetti romance, Lady and the Tramp. Butcher, he says that he wants a two spaghetti speciale. Heavy on the meat's ball. It's one of the most parodied scenes in cinema history, and with good reason. The best spaghetti in a town. The 50s may have seen the beginning of a decline for Disney, but this movie and this moment are among the animation company's most well loved. Al fresco dining, a candlelit dinner, a private performer at your table, it's a date most of us would only dream of. It's a beautiful night. Of course, spaghetti is notoriously difficult to eat with dignity, but on this occasion, the slurping leads to smooching, which is never a bad thing. Side by side with your loved one, you'll find an enchantment here. Number four, erotic food play, nine and a half weeks. You might have already felt the need to loosen your waistband, but in our next scene, you might want to loosen your collar as well, because things are about to get hot and steamy. Kim Basinger and Mickey Rourke are all but making love during this foodie few minutes, as Basinger closes her eyes and Rourke feeds her a variety of things. From the strawberries to the chili peppers to the honey-drenched climax, these are some extreme close-ups for some extreme sexual tension. Number 3. The Big Kahuna Burger, Pulp Fiction Being caught at breakfast by Jules Winfield and Vincent Vega is never a good start to anybody's day, especially when vengeance is on the menu. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. These petty crooks have just fallen into some big trouble, but breakfast waits for no man, and Samuel L. Jackson is more than happy to chow down before settling business. Mm hmm This is a tasty burger. Big Kahuna is a fast food joint of Quentin Tarantino's own imagination, but with their tasty burgers and satisfying sprites, it's a restaurant we'd all like to visit. Vincent, you ever had a Big Kahuna burger? Want a bite? They're real tasty. Number two, Christmas dinner, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> It's an annual event, an awesome event, and it can be an awkward event. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Christmas dinner rarely passes us by without at least a little hiccup, but when National Lampoon does seasonal feasting, they go all out. There is pride in the eyes of Chevy Chase at this scene's beginning, but over the next few minutes, his goodwill is tested to the limit. You're not doing anything constructive. Run into the living room, get my stogie. Though European Vacation featured an interesting dream sequence involving food. It's the 
the hilariously commonplace unexpected Pledge of Allegiance, overly inquisitive cat, and overeating dog around the Christmas table that takes this spot. Oh, he's just yakking on a bone. He got it up. He's all right now. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. We made it, dude. Huh. Number one, eating burgers, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. It's been a long, appetite-inspiring journey to get to this point, but our struggles are nothing compared to the plight of Harold and Kumar. I want 30 sliders, five french fries, and four large cherry Cokes. I want the same, except make mine diet Cokes. They're stoners with the munchies, and this movie documents their quest for satisfaction. White Castle is their mecca, as the double act dreams of devouring burgers, having seen a commercial on TV. When they finally reach their goal and the gargantuan feast is laid out before them, it's the end of a journey as epic as anything else out there. Damn, that hit the spot. That was the best <laughs> meal of my life. Mine too. Do you agree with our list? Which big screen dinner scene did we miss? Hey, maintenant, would monsieur care for an aperitif, or would he prefer to order straight away? For more mouth-watering top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Come on, come on, what else? Scotch. Nice. Some red wine. Okay. Now we can eat.